Here at Clark & Well Design Week, there's been one thing that's cropped up time and time again, and that is blurring the boundaries in hotel design and hospitality. So to celebrate that theme, Hotel Designs is here at Table Place Chairs showroom in the heart of Clark & Well to speak to leading interior designers on how that theme is developing in the hospitality industry and beyond. So let's go inside. <laughs> Welcome to our exclusive panel discussion here at Table Place Chairs at Clark & Well Design Week. I'm here with four incredible designers, so let's meet them, shall we? Nazim? Hi, I'm Nassim Kerting. I'm the head of design of The Office Group. Uh, the Office Group is a flex space company. We have buildings all across the UK and in Germany. Fantastic. And Aaron, hi, welcome. Hi, Hamid. Uh, I'm Aaron Rana. I'm the design manager for Accor Hotels. Um, I work with external designers looking after all of our brands uh, from economy to premium. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Just a few hotels in your portfolio. <laughs> just a few. <laughs> and Tina um, Conran. I'm Tina Norden, I'm a partner at Conran and Partners just around the corner, so we're neighbours with Table Place Chairs. Um, we're a multidisciplinary architecture and interior design practice working across the different kind of sectors and mostly hospitality and um, residential. Fantastic. And Ben? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Ben Webb, Managing Director at Three Stories. Uh, we're a branding and interior design agency specialising in hospitality and workplace. Fantastic. And I'm Hamish Kilburn, the editor of Hotel Designs. And we're here today to talk about blurring the boundaries in hospitality. So before we start, just very, very quickly, why is it so important for us all to come together? You all sit in very different corners of the industry, but kind of merged together. Um, in recent years, how important has that sort of collaboration been between different areas of the industry? Tina, perhaps we can start with you and we'll just work our way around. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think, I think the boundaries of our lives are completely blurred. Um, mm -hmm. The last two years have blurred them even more than that was happening beforehand already. So I think it's really important that as designers, as people who create spaces, that we work with that and we facilitate that in the spaces that we design so people can do all sorts of different things in all sorts of different ways um, and you know stay flexible and stay attractive and ben you, you've been in the industry for, for a while but relatively new with three stories i know it's been a few years but we've had a few years on pause yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah, but how, how, has thing, how have things changed in terms of like the the boundaries that you're able to blur now that you've got your studio and it's a smaller team yeah i think well when when you obviously have a smaller team you're a lot more nimble so mm. you can work on lots of different types of projects small to large projects um, I think what's interesting, especially when it comes to hospitality, and the, probably very similar to what you were just saying, I think the, the challenges we're finding at the moment is getting people back into these spaces. Yeah. And one of the areas that's well changed exponentially really in recent years is office design. Yeah. So Nazim, I mean you're an expert in this field. Um, I reckon the boundaries are blurred even, even in terms of your role. I mean, I don't see you as an office designer. I see you as a designer who yeah. designs offices. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think um, as we've been speaking about, the, the boundaries are completely blurred. Mm. And for us, we, we don't look to office design for inspiration. Like We are looking at hotel design, we're looking at hospitality spaces. These are the things that inspire office design. So yeah, I definitely see myself as a designer that loves design more than um, an office designer as such. And I think all designers see ourselves, yeah, yeah. we're problem Absolutely. solvers, you know, we, we, we want to use problem solving and, and that's design thinking to solve um, the world's problems. Mm. Talk yeah. about problem solving, Aaron, <laughs> <laughs> your job. You seem to be the key in my eyes to unlocking new opportunities within hotels because, yeah. you know, you're, you're looking after the brand as well as the design, um, but also the pre preconception would be the, the barrier between change. So. Uh, yeah. What would you say? Are you I more mean, sort of a bit like Tina said, over the <clears throat> last couple of years, things have changed dramatically. Um, before COVID, we were still working on that because at Nicole, we have an, a, a, a concept called augmented hospitality, mm. which is everything and anything that the guest wants uh, in a space. We no longer wanted to look at each of our spaces, and this was before COVID, so now it's even more relevant. We didn't want to look at spaces as one dimensional in the sense that this is a lobby, this is where you do your reception, this is a restaurant, this is where you eat, this is a room, this is where you sleep. It's no longer that. We, we merge all of those spaces, but 
on top of that, we're bringing in lots of new things, um, bringing F&B to the forefront of what we're doing. Wellness, spa, all of those elements are coming in as well. Okay, so before we go any further, I kind of just want everyone to understand some of the projects that you're working on. So Ben, we'll start with you. One of your projects is literally in our shadow <laughs> in right shadow. now, which is yeah. the yeah. Hotel oh, yes, Indigo Club yeah. and Well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit more about that project and potentially some others as well. Yeah, so I mean, Hotel Indigo, uh, Clark and Well, that started, um, the year sort of pre-COVID, um, so we're still moving along. Um, <laughs> there's a lot to it. There's a food and beverage component on the ground floor. We're converting the, the pub also on the on the corner and suites and multiple bedrooms. So that's a very exciting one. Um, lots to talk about there with how that's changed. Um, and then another area of which we focus now on is actually the entertainment industry. So we're actually now working in music and doing music venues, uh, wow, working okay. around the world. That's been really interesting. Is that enforcing some of your decisions on some like the hotel projects you're working on? Yeah, as well? I mean, um, Indigo is quite interesting because, especially with the last two years, with the way people are guess definitely working. I mean, that's a big part with the bedrooms, the way that they've changed. Yeah, I sure. think looking at potentially how those rooms could be more flexible. Some of the rooms now are more like could be hired for uh, office space, so maybe you just have mm. it for temporary use and maybe they're interconnecting. So maybe mm. I want to hire my room or stay in my room, but have an interconnecting workspace as well that I can have it's meetings connected. in. Yeah, and then yeah. fitness as well, big part of it. Mm. You know, yeah, for sure. Some of the higher end brands we work with, they're actually having like dedicated, you can have your own gym yeah. next to your room. Why, why go down to the gym downstairs when we can have your own That's space? interesting, and it's definitely something we're seeing, you know, hotels wanting to really sort of shelter that office mm. space. I kind of want to take it one step further, Nazim. Do you think um, the office group has a, would, would ever offer bedrooms? Is we that actually we, we have <laughs> yeah, it's just careful, isn't it? <laughs> we, like, where is that boundary in terms of what's a hotel? To be fair, we're working together on projects. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, we had it here first. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have actually we've got um, two guest Sorry, rooms. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no worries. Right. We've got one in um, one of our projects in Tadjal House and. We did have one which we removed because it wasn't as successful, but our one in Tintagel House um, in Vauxhall, there's not a lot around there, so we do find that it is rented out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we, we looked at it recently, and it's a lot about the regulations. Mm. There's a, oh, there's, really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite hard to... like. There's stringent regulations yeah. for hotel design, and so it's hard to kind of travel across oh. to have a multidisciplinary -dis space. Mm. Um, but we are so up for it. And Tina, some of your projects, so we can't really not mention the Park Hyatt. So you, so you <laughs> yes. opened the one in Auckland and you're opening the one in Jakarta. <clears throat> yes, Labour Two of Love, brands, eight different years. hotels. <laughs> eight other, other projects eight like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, COVID didn't help that, but um, <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed, due, due to open this summer in, um, in Jakarta, we're working on another one in Changsha. We have a studio in Hong Kong, so hence the kind of slightly Asian mm, slant there. Sure. We've got 10 people in, in Hong Kong. So um, so that's that's been taking up quite a lot of our time. We've also been doing a project with Accor, which is a brand-related project. It was super exciting. Um, we were just saying that, you know, I think there's quite a lot of thought leadership going on with Accor, and I'm not just saying that because I'm working with them, <laughs> but because I'm working with them, I can see what they're doing. And I yeah. think that's very important just to, keep thinking, keep innovating, how can we do things differently? I think, you know, yeah, being definitely. static is, is a difficult one these days. And you're days, all you about know? telling the brand narrative in a different light. You know, that, that's so. the important thing is to just to keep it fresh and to keep kind of yeah. thinking how can we improve things and how can we do things differently. Um, but yeah, we, we're also working on quite a lot of BTR, which is obviously the hot word in residential, which is um, built to rent, which is kind of almost like an apart hotel, mm. really, when you think about yeah. it. But the likes of Argent are doing that. They obviously working together with Related out of the US. So there's a lot of that happening. Um, smaller apartments, big public areas, lots of kind of lobbies, um, gyms, mm. you know, screening rooms or whatever. So it is kind of like it's a little like hotel. Hotels. Yeah, yeah literally. exactly. Yeah, mm. That's exactly. exactly what we do. Mm. And Aaron, what are the major projects? Oh, so got enough time. Um, <laughs> so I, I look after 12 brands um, yeah. as a part of my role, um, and they completely vary from economy to premium to mid scale to lifestyle brands. Um, again, renovations, refurbishments, conversions, new builds. So we, we basically cover everything. Um, but they can be hotels, but there's also mice opportunities mm -hmm. for meetings and events um and yeah i think ben you touched on something earlier about the music side of things one of our brands ibis its brand's passion is music yeah. so we are actually bringing stages and and events and gigs into public areas and using them to draw the local community in um but we've got projects ranging i'm working on a resort in russia at the moment um which is a swiss hotel bringing vitality uh, there's gyms in the rooms, things like that, circadian lighting, which changed all about the wellness and mm -hmm. spa. 
Um, I've got a, a fantastic Moven Pick project, uh, which is all about F&B, chocolate, wine, uh, coffee, you know, all of those things. So it's a kind of F&B dream. Um, but all the way down to budget hotels at airports, which we know that there's a, a huge rise of for people wanting stays there for mm. travel um, and staycation. So we're doing a project down in Paynton. Uh, we're bringing in a premium hotel in Liverpool. Nazim, I yeah. guess relating this back to your sort of arena, mm. it's more congested than ever now. Design obviously has to play such a larger role, so you're constantly having to keep on the ball with, with all the trends, everything that's happening and, and yeah. moving forward in terms of, you know, designing what, what your, your properties. But working with external designers, have you found that helpful? Yeah, it's interesting hearing you guys talk about it because it's exactly that. Like, we, go, we turn to our external designers for... Like, um, so we're not building each, because we, we design each building differently. Mm -hmm. So we rely on our external designers to keep pushing and making it better and creating extraordinary spaces. I think that's the current um, brief to designers, isn't it? Just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. making things bigger, better, bolder, um, but also human and, and so mm -hmm. many things. So yeah, I, I mean, we love working with our external designers and we also have an in-house team and it enriches the in-house team's process and work. Mm -hmm. We're able to find new suppliers and everything because of our relationship exactly. with, our, uh, with our external designers. It's, it makes everything better. For sure, yeah. which leads me really nicely on to talk about um, collaboration, which is really the word that everyone's using at the moment. And I was on a panel with Simon the other day, Simon Kincaid, and he said, um, from your studio, and he said something that really resonated with me, which was that there's less uh, emphasis on ownership of an idea these days mm. and more sort of focus on the collaborative process. And he yeah. was talking in terms of your team and yes. how they work. But actually, when you extend that out to collaborations between brands, suppliers, designers, I think that's actually really important. Mm. Mm. So my question really is to understand how is that collaboration helping to push and to like soften the boundaries between hospitality, residential offices, cruise ships, for example. It's about the best ideas, isn't it? I mean, that's what we've always <coughs> said, is that, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do, problem solving, mm -hmm. you yeah. were saying it earlier, you know, we're trying to find the best solution for the problem slash the project, <laughs> the design, whatever it might be. And whether that idea comes from our junior designer or whether that comes from a supplier we're working with or whether that comes yeah. from whomever it might be, yeah. you know, if that's the right idea, then we, we will go with that and we will develop that and we'll take it. And I think that's the exciting thing about it. So let's talk about the specifics as we're sort of getting into a project. Um, I kind of want to know, uh, are there elements within a design of a hotel that, or elements within a design that are more likely to be specified in both sort of hotels, residential, cruise ships, in terms of like furniture or carpets? Would you look for the same suppliers and brands and styles in, in mm. each one? And where can we sort of, pinpoint those to be let's start with like flooring for example do you think that yeah those bound I mean, it's all about bound being blurred right so so i mean <clears throat> look, um we can look look at it in two avenues i guess um yes all flooring or wall finishes furniture to be quite honest with you they do completely fall into all camps they do at the end of the day it's an object and it's the purpose of the object a chair is to sit yeah. on you know so you can use it in a hotel as well as a public area as well as in a meeting room or something like that um, but when you get down to the specifics of it it's the technical side of things sure. that really Absolutely. makes the difference so it's very different put uh, different putting in a flooring into a wet area than it is a dry area or from doing it into a hotel into a yacht um, or residential so there's different regulations different things that we have to account for in each of those spaces which sometimes means that we have to discount certain pieces of furniture or yeah. um, work with suppliers to see how do we upgrade the technical ability of it to meet with the requirements. So for me, I I don't say anything is off limits because otherwise we'll say we'll end up with the same hotels, the mm. same look, same feel, same fabric, same this, same everything. Come with, you know, your ideas. There are certain objects, in my opinion, that cross all the boundaries that are a lot easier. Lighting mm. is you can use pendants, wall lights, floor lamps desk lamps, they kind of cross all those boundaries anyway. But it's in the technical side that I think it gets a bit mm. blurred and, and how you do it and where you apply it. Yeah, and so we're, we're in the beautiful circle of life here at Table Place Chairs. And Tina, you'll recognise this because obviously yep. it was in your um, <clears throat> installation at Hicks. That was very much fit, it fit the purpose in yeah. terms of like zoning that area. Zoning's a really interesting Definitely, it's creating space, you know, and I, I remember, you know, back in the days working with Terence on, on restaurants, 
never put three rows of tables next to each other. <laughs> Right? That's, that's one of those things that always stuck in my mind because people want to have a place, right? They want to have their own little area. So when you're in a restaurant, you know, that's why the booths in the corner are always the most popular. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all about creating a space that people feel comfortable in. However you do this, um, and obviously this, this does that, you know, whether it's in an office environment or at Higgs, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just thinking about how can you make space within you know, a room mm -hmm. for people to, you know, to do whatever it is that they might want to be doing, but feel comfortable in human scale. Yeah, having your place is quite interesting. I mean, we've done some workplace um, projects in London, and I guess the assumption coming out of COVID that was that everybody would want to be back at work or in a, in a co-working environment and have this freedom to obviously work how they want and have their own freedom. But what's quite interesting that's come out of it is having that space, having mm. your area has almost disappeared in this whole co-working space mm. because you just don't have it. You just turn and up. No, yeah. so what's mm. quite interesting is actually the need for private offices or private spaces mm. aren't completely haven't completely disappeared no. they're actually quite popular but just on a different scale so whereas you've got a massive team that has, has a 200 person office you've now got smaller teams mm. that are more like satellites and you, you share a co-work space um, but talking about like that, that that part that you have as your own even things like having your own locker or somewhere mm. that you can store your equipment it's just a psychological thing. Yeah. You still have the same mm. space to work at, but just to have that environment where you can come in, work, look, put your laptop away at the end of the day, mm. you know it's safe, that's yours. Mm. It's kind of a human thing that, yeah. yeah it, you want something you that's want yours. Something, yeah. Because obviously mm. we've gone from having your own desk, your own workspace, your own computer, everything, to now quite, quite open and fluid. So. Yeah, sure. For us, it's so much about designing a space with plenty of choice, mm -hmm. so that when people do come back, that they're, they feel like there's a space for them, you know, mm. that suits their mood or the function for their day, what they plan to do. So, you know, making sure there's plenty of spaces for Zoom calls and all of that, but as well as having areas for focus work, but areas where you want to kind of hear a bit of buzz as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one it's thing, I mean, sorry, mm -hmm. but one thing we, we've done is like, and it's interesting hearing you guys talk about this blurring of the boundaries, because similarly you know we're trying to think of like what are the amenities that people want in our yeah, workspaces yeah. you know do they want a gym oh they need they need wellness spaces they need pla places to yeah. pray to to you know um if they've got a child that we've got spaces for parents like members bars everything mm. you know it's just thinking about all these different doggy things daycare. I was yes, literally doggy daycare. Like, doggy daycare. <laughs> i don't think i've spoken that about is that. a thing great idea and there's yeah. a hotel the other day that was you could hire, like rent the room and obviously there's a there's a charge for the dog <laughs> and some pajamas yeah. I, I, I get invited <laughs> to review a hotel once but actually it wasn't me reviewing it as my yeah. dog it was yeah. a dog hotel <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable okay so with that in Sorry, mind do you think that <laughs> the demand for space is to be is, is there a risk that spaces are being demanded to be too many things at once. Mm. You know, and at that yeah. point, that what, how do you choose one, yeah. what, mm. what's you know, more important? We always say like, you know, if you try design for everybody, you design for nobody, <coughs> right? Because yeah. it's, it's if then you, you need to design. Then you make something that's so generic. I mean, I think the, the way to approach it is that you design specific in terms of the look and feel of it, yeah. but you try and keep the functionality quite open, which is difficult, difficult yeah. to do. But I think it's, it's creating a character, creating a personality. You're really yeah. good at that as well. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> to create something that, that mm. feels specific and unique, yeah. but it has flexibility, but it's difficult, you know. Yeah, yeah. not losing sight of the concept. So like if you take some of the Accor brands, you know, like Mauve and Pick is all about food and beverage. So if food and beverage is at the heart of what that hotel does, then bring that into every aspect. Still have open plan and mm. office facilities and even the gym, but apply that thinking to all those areas. So just don't lose the soul of the mm, brand. I guess that's yeah. what it's about, isn't it? But yeah, you're right. You, you, if you're not careful, you will end up creating a, a soul of space. Mm. A, a different angle as well, because yeah. I agree completely with what you're saying, but sometimes yeah. I, I do think uh, people's attitude to work has completely changed. Mm. So I know for me, I, I've always been very flexible with where I work and, and what I do. Um, if I go to a hotel and it's a restaurant and I'm sitting there and I've got a coffee and I've got a little nibble, I don't mind sitting in a restaurant with people. Mm. Of course, other people may have, you know, but I think those boundaries are completely blurring now. Mm. So for me, you design the space and people will turn up and use it the way they want mm. to use it. People are no longer shy about setting up the main thing that we do, yeah. put sockets everywhere. 
Yeah. Like it's, well, it's well, one of the niggle. comments. I've got a niggle to make actually. Yeah. It's not about Go one of the hotels. <laughs> I'm not actually going to name the hotel. So I wouldn't do that to them. But I went to a very well-known hotel that's just opened in London, um, very close to Soho, recently. I and, think I know uh, it. My, well, this is my issue. Is I went in and uh, it was during the day in the morning. Um, I had some time to kill before my next meeting, so I sat there, ordered a coffee opened my laptop, all of a sudden someone came over and said, excuse me, sir, no. you can't have a laptop in this area. Oh. Come with me, I'll show you no. to where the laptop designated area the is. And where was the laptop? In the corner, outside. outside. <laughs> there, was, there was no lighting, it was horrendous. Also, the lobby was dead. But my, my argument is that the designer who designed that hotel, very well known, wouldn't know that that's the protocol. That's happening. Yeah. So yeah. are you sort of finding that you're designing these hotels and they're not actually used as you have intended them to be used? Yeah. Mm. I don't know, it's my little, like, I mean, it's, really sort I mean, you always, you always go back. dagger. I'll, I'll give you Aaron. Whether that happens I guess that's a, why you're so important in the mix, Aaron. Hopefully, we, yeah, because we, we, we sometimes get the GM on board, and it's about the operator as yeah. well. So we try to involve them as early as possible yeah. so mm -hmm. that they can input as well. So they have a lot of ideas, and at the end of the day, they're the ones running the hotel. Yeah. So they need to be, they're vital because... I've just had a hotel, for example, where we do a welcome experience where we've removed a reception desk. Yeah. Um, and the idea is it's a lot more flow, it's a lot more mm. kind of casual, it's about meeting people face to face, having that interaction instead of kind of hitting a barrier. And we turned up and they literally, the first thing the operator went, I want a reception desk. So we need their input, yeah. they need to be involved. Sometimes well, it what are your time. thoughts but on that though? It takes time. Well, I mean, in, in, that, in that example, what are your thoughts? Because in lockdown, I, I remember having a conversation with someone <laughs> saying that at the end of this, the pandemic, um, the lobby will become more theatrical and a lot mm. of the operational aspects will happen before check-in. Now that we're out of the pandemic as such, do you think that that's going to be the case or do you still see the need for there being a check-in desk? Uh, Obviously, I think people, people want I think, to be welcomed, but course. it doesn't yeah. have to be at a desk, service, isn't it? Right? Service. It, it can be in whatever way, but as long as you are acknowledged. You yeah. Know. I think it's that yeah. human interaction mm. is really important. You know, just to walk in and just For be sure, welcomed. Yeah. Mm. Like, even like last week, I mean, yeah. the Americans do it so well, but just literally them, like the receptionist remembering your name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's important not only in hotels now, oh. but also in, in spaces yeah. that you're designing as yeah, well. You definitely. Know, people expect that level of service. But I think for us, that is the key. We can design the most beautiful space, but if you don't have like a, an outstanding um, operation staff that yeah. are op operating yeah. the space with a yeah. smile on their face, as yeah. you said, yeah. and super polite, there's no way anyone will want to stay in you your space. Mm. But yeah. it's taking yeah. people on that journey, isn't it? Yeah. Because, you know, like you're rightly saying, you've got the GM coming in, and sometimes it's very late. You need to make sure that they get what you're trying They've to do. They've got to get the concept. They've, They've got, got to get, get the, concept. the idea. and. We do a lot of work, we do a lot of zoning, lots of plans. Before I even touch design, I want GAs, I want you know general arrangement plans and, and making sure that we understand the space. Yeah. And we're a little bit like you said, Tina, what areas are we designating? But like you said, everywhere is becoming anything that mm. they want. In a call, we don't push this idea that that is the working area, that's the restaurant area. It's augmented. Yeah. Everything is everything. It's how you want to use it. Come, feel welcome. My biggest pet peeve is you go in, oh, you need to buy a drink if you want to sit and use the Wi Fi. Yeah, exactly. Do you yeah. know what? I, that, I get it, but at the same time, we still want people to come and use our yeah, hotel spaces. Sure. So, so the way that's feel, delivered, feel welcome. It? Like coming yeah. to the hotel, Absolutely. sit down and have a coffee. Okay, right. I've clocked that you're sitting there, so I'm you're going right. to now come and see you every half an hour. Yeah. To yeah. Make sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Coffee. Whereas if you're you just left alone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you just feel looked after. Versus like yeah, yeah. your laptop. Yeah, yeah. And I think I was in the same hotel, the same thing. Oh, we'll have to chat Automatically, you go. Right. Okay. And I think because that particular hotel is trying to be something in a neighbourhood that's quite contrasting yes. and maybe they're just worried about the sort of people coming in, but actually it's not. I'll be interested to see what happens in 12 months time. Yeah. We'll yeah. Full of people on that. <laughs> I always love the example of the Ace Hotel and you know yeah. that yeah. that <laughs> table in the Ace Hotel, that's where like businesses start, that's where you know, people get For together, sure. it's just so good, and, and they never ask you to... No, have you seen it? Well, but that didn't really survive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it, is it have you seen Bad it example, now? yeah, yeah. They've, they've rounded off the edges to make it more inclusive, and yeah, the really design's it, changed, yeah. it's really yes. clever. And they've like, reused the same table. I think it's beautiful For sure, what they've yeah. done, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The Mama Shelter in Shoreditch is one of our hotels, and what I love about that space that people don't necessarily know unless you go, is they've got an internal courtyard but it looks completely like an outdoor space and it's got an outdoor bar, it's got kind of uh, planting, but it, it's really enticing because you've, you, when you're inside, you see the space, you can come in and out. And over the last couple of years, obviously outdoor has become huge with the increase in dining outside, 
um, especially over COVID, we are bringing that in. And like you said, real plants, color plays mm. a big f thing for me as well. Yeah, sure. It's not just putting plant, a room full of plants, yeah. but it's really interesting. And now that a branding isn't dictated by color, you can yeah, then exactly. play more with that. Yeah. We've talked about this um, at Artie's we panel. Did, yeah, where, yeah. So yeah. something I didn't know was that Artie, they do a wall covering that's uh, that it's air purifying. Mm. Yeah. And we've got paint now that mm. when you use the paint, it's purifying the air. So it goes back into this sustainability idea, but it's a hidden technology that people don't know. Yeah. And yeah. it's a buzzword, isn't it? Biophilic it's not design, just, it's kind yeah, of like... It's not just a plant yeah. in the corner of the Exactly, yeah. it's, it's great to throw into a panel discussion. Exactly. It's funny that it's our clients even ask for it now, which is really surprising. They're like, mm. oh, there's not enough plants. Can you please get more plants in that area? I'm like, oh, wow. It definitely but you know, I the thing that, the, the thing that also gets me, my father was a landscape architect, so you know, I feel quite passionate about this, but you know, just sticking a plant there doesn't work, <laughs> you know, because the plants will die. Yeah. And that's actually not very... This is what I was about you know, to say. Depression. Operationally, yeah. think about the operation. <laughs> you know, if you're putting plants in there, think about what type of plants, what will grow there, who will look after it. Yes. You know, do you need a contract for someone to actually look after it? Because yeah. otherwise, you're going to be throwing away plants every week, and that's yeah. not really, really that also, environmentally I, I friendly find either. Fake, yeah. fake, is fake is then a big thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, no, no, no. no. Uh, you say that, but operationally, it's very difficult. To I still need to dust is it. Is it bad? I mean, I don't know if that's an excuse I'm hearing all the time, but that's kind of what I hear. But maybe no plants. Well, exactly. Do something different. Because the plastic. How good, that's not great for the environment, no, that will never degrade. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're running out of time, but I do want to end with, with hopefully something progressive. And that's, um, Tina, last, last year we obviously were at Hicks and you worked with designers collaboratively. That was the first time I think I've really seen designers working with each other in such a meaningful capacity because it wasn't a competition. Mm. I really want to understand and really want to push designers working with designers in order to move along in this industry and to help evolve it even further. Is it realistic with the conversations that you're having since then and the conversations you're all having really for that to happen in the future on any project? I mean, it's always tricky because, you know, designers have egos, you know, they have certain styles, no. they work in certain <laughs> ways. No, 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 no. We've just no. said that they don't have egos. Just getting that out of it. But I think it's I think it's, you know, from a client point of view, you know, mm. I think, you know, so many hotels, for example, different designer for F and B to rooms so and whatever. What I was about to bring up, but yeah. they never work together. No. They do this and they do this, and Just there's there's no why, why connection. Why that? not? Is you know, it? why not? Why not work together? Because I mean, I know it will probably make it again, though, longer. Is that you bring or? designers on a panel, mm. and they're all talking to each other like, oh my god, yeah, no, we have that challenge as well mm. on that project, and, and it's actually <laughs> just I mean, a dialogue like that, that needs to be had. Because when you're working on a project, and there's a team, and you're working with architects, you're working with landscape designers, you're working with interior designers, you, mm. it is happening. Mm. Yeah. It's just, I guess it's more of a thing maybe when it's your discipline. Yeah. yeah. Interdisciplinary, yeah. if you've got two interior designers on a job, then yeah, okay, maybe. But then it, it's personalities. Mm. It's all personalities, yeah. and you're right, he goes. <laughs> really what it boils down to yeah. it really is well, yeah. what's the solution in that can we because it seems like that seems such a, a veneer of a problem that we can eliminate in order to get so progressively forwards I mean make people do it right? well, I, I mean if you're a client I make think people do it shame and see actually I'm <laughs> joking <laughs> 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 it's like 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 it's well, maybe that their aesthetic style is similar. Yeah. So this is yeah. something we do. So a part of my role is as well is bringing the A team together. Essentially, mm. it's like pulling sure. different consultants for different parts of it. Lighting designers, you know, um, FF and E if we need to. We're pulling in the right people together. Um, I think it's key that as well, very early on, that we pair the right designers personally with an owner and the team and the project management. And it's making sure they all work together. But when it comes to the same discipline, so i.e. Mm. interior design, we do have it where we've got somebody doing the bedrooms and somebody doing F and B. And there is this clash sometimes where it's, a, a, it's ego, but also a bit of kind of like pride. It's in, mm. you know, you kind of go, well, this is my baby. And I mm. kind of, I've been working on it. And our team have worked on it and come up with this concept. Are they going to get it? And do they want to be? And I think it is about just, you know, bridging that gap, bridging that gap. Yeah. just put it down, put all things aside and have a conversation. Because yeah. when we're out and about and we all have conversations, we're all talking the same oh, language. Yeah, I've, well, it I feels think perhaps feels we need different. more sort of opportunities to, to design installations where there's no client in order to really kind of, at, at trade shows, for example, in order to really sort of prove that these conversations can happen and you can challenge an idea without it being a personal attack on a business. They're great yeah. opportunities. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. No limits, and it was inspiring. Yeah, it was I just fun. really hope that we can move forward with it and mm. it wasn't just a one thing. So, 
Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're going to hang you. around for the party yeah, afterwards. Sure. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> um, yeah, brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks.